It's Damien on Design on the Lucy Ann Land Show every weekend, and Damien Farrell is with Damien Farrell Design Group. Damien, I have a little story. I don't know if I've ever shared this with you before. Back in the 1980s, early 1980s, I went down to Tulane University to visit a friend, mm -hmm. and one of her roommates was in architecture school at, okay. at Tulane. And one night, we were all going out to the bar, and we said to her roommate, come on, come with us. She was sitting in front of these... <laughs> Little toothpicks, <laughs> gluing stuff together. And she was making the most phenomenal structure I've ever seen anyone do. She had the tongue depressor. She had everything in there. Yeah. I looked at her and I said, is that what you do in architecture yeah. school? <laughs> yeah. That's the way it used to be. That's the way it used to be. We, we had to make models of all of our design projects. So that was six years' worth of stuff. And actually, when we got to that, when, when our class of 13 graduated from the University of Natal in South Africa, we actually had a ceremonial burning of, of what we all <laughs> considered to be our bad models. <laughs> and, and we used to use this glue called Bostic, which, you know, it had this, I mean, you could practically get high on this glue. It was like a magic marker. So it was so flammable, and we put the poured the Bostic glue of his <laughs> oh my gosh. and lit it up in the parking lot to celebrate six <laughs> years of architecture school. But yeah, you'd stay up all night gluing toothpicks and making little trees and, you know, tiny little models. I had never and seen anything like it. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> extraordinary. So you today, know? what are architecture students doing? How are they? 3D printing. 3D printing? 3D printing. Oh, what a world we live in. I know. It's just changed phenomenally. And we have an example here in the studio of a project that we, are, we did in our office. Unfortunately, it's a well-known and somewhat controversial project, the Near North Housing Project, affordable housing. It didn't happen. Um, as we know, it's right on, it was planned right on Main Street. But we had this model built at the Taubman School of Architecture and Design. Um, using their 3D printer, and this is two-year-old technology. This, this is the next big thing. I mean, this has been touted as the next, uh, this is the next gold rush of technology, is 3D printing. Because, it, it, I mean, it's, it's going so far right now that there is a group in Holland who are 3D printing what they are calling the canal house. They are literally going to 3D print a house. Now it's going to take a long time and this printer is about uh, 15 feet high, it is about uh, 10 feet square that houses this mechanism that can move on an XYZ axis, right? So literally print. So, you know, I mean, think about where we've, we've come from, what a big deal it was when we could go out and buy a 2D printer mm -hmm. for about, about 100 bucks now right. and have it on your desk. So go backwards to when we got copy machines in the office. What a big deal that was. Right. And that's only in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. right? Now you can actually buy a 3D printer that does small stuff. All right. So stuff that's about, say, six inches square. Mm -hmm. it, but you can actually order it online and you can bring it to your desk you just plug in your USB, it syncs with your computer, and you can print stuff using many of the 3D softwares. So stuff like SketchUp, which is now freely available online. All right? We use the Pro version for our design. Other software like Rhino, Revit, um, AutoCAD, all softwares that anyone who is doing anything in three dimensions, from architects to designers to furniture manufacturers, you know, this is, this is the next big thing. I mean, it, 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 extrapolate this to the future, right? The way we build cars right now, we get rolls of metal arrive here in Detroit, right? Huge rolls of metal weighing millions of pounds. That metal then, pieces get joined together, they get stamped, they get all the components get put together on assembly lines. Mm -hmm. Take a door of your car, look how thick your, the car door is. And when you're 3D printing, you can mix in different materials, different colors. You could conceivably take a door of your car and 3D print that car, that door, starting with the steel or the aluminum or whatever metal you're using on the outside, coming through that thing to the plastics, to the fabric, and have that done. I saw a guy who actually is in the process of making a whole 3D car. Yeah. Unbelievable. So what is... 
the how you, instead of ink, right? Yes. You're putting in. You're putting in a material. The material it is. You're putting in, and so where we're used to seeing the inkjet cartridge go up and down the paper, right, mm -hmm. all over the paper, this is doing exactly the same thing, but it's moving in the vertical and horizontal horizontal axes at the same time. So not only is the printer moving, but the bed on which you're making something is moving with it. Hmm. So in the most simplest form, the things that are being printed now are generally out of plastic, recycled plastic, and the raw material comes in little pellets, little quarter-inch pellets, and then the, the jet is heated. So it's pulling this, these little pellets out, and as it hits the jet, it's heated and melted and then printed, or it's done in, the, in a powder form like this model we have here. And when you touch this particular one, it actually has a sort of grainy, powdery feel, as mm -hmm. you felt. But in this model, you know, we've printed a major city area here with probably about 20 houses, the house forms, all perfectly accurate, and the contours at six-inch intervals. And so when you run your fingers over the site, you can feel these very subtle contours. But this model is absolutely perfectly to scale. And, and, it, and we, you know, this, even the openings and the windows and the porches are left out, as you will, as it's printing. So there was no cutting or anything. What you see here was completely printed. This is the done product. No one went back and cut openings out or shaped anything or shaved. It's incredible. What does this model help you do as an architect, then, to create your, your project in reality? Uh, let's take aside the politics that prevented it from yeah. actually happening. <laughs> but <laughs> In this instance, this was a planned unit development, the infamous PUD. Mm -hmm. You have to present um, 3D information. They actually ask for models. So instead of taking a person or people out of the loop, as you will, out in your office, because a model like this would take a couple of weeks to build in an architect's office, instead we just gave them the building that we had designed in our software. They plugged it into the machine and let it go. And the next day we went back and our model was printed, mm -hmm. done. So, you know, push that forward to things like prosthetics, um, facial prosthetics, eyeball prosthetics, uh, legs, medical instruments, things that require extraordinary precision. Um, you know, it's what you're seeing now, um, printing fabrics, complete forms, so printing soft forms like purses are actually being made with 3D printers with multiple colors, multiple textures, and multiple materials. What is this going to do to the manufacturing process of these items? You, you as a designer, as a creator, you mm -hmm. create a, you have a vision, you create it on paper, on computer, mm -hmm. whatever, and generally then you, there's a builder, there's a, a mm -hmm. contractor, there's someone who comes mm -hmm. in and builds a house or whatever it might be. Well, if I can just print it out. Well, it's, I, it, I don't think it's going to take away, it, it's simply a new way of creating the materials with which we construct, build, and manufacture things. Mm -hmm. So it's still going to require the design. That doesn't go away or something. So where I see the real power lies is its sustainability. So the ability to minimize our use of natural materials where where we have, uh, we're running out of stuff. You know, let's try to take the pressure off wood products and so on, which we're seeing already. Look in the simplest form, decks and so on, where we can make stuff with synthetic materials, with wood fiber, instead of cutting the trees down, you know, so we can use fast growth stuff and we can print with that. Mm -hmm. And we can make beams, we can make structural elements, we can print frames of windows, if you will, with fiberglass, with plastics, with molten steel. I, I don't think it's going to take away, I think we're just going to get higher precision, more efficient, um, faster, more reliable product. But we're still going to have to assemble and put things together. Mm -hmm. um, it's just better quality, I think that's where we're headed, and speed. Another interesting issue is this whole copyright or, yeah. you know, I, how that impacts it as well. Yeah. There's a piece here that uh, Aaron McNair, who is your wonderful studio manager at uh, Damien Farrell Design Group, uh, provided us with. And it is a 3D printed metal and open source chair designs that uh, made it into a New York exhibition. Uh, and it, this exhibition um, included a blueprint for a chair that can be altered and produced by anyone with a 3D printer. Yeah. Open, open, open source, source 
That's exciting, you know. Well, think of what Tesla just did, right? Elon Musk just released all of the patents of their battery technology. Released all of the patents. So the ability for other people to take stuff and do things with it. And I think that's been a trend with software, right? Mm -hmm. Look at apps and so on. There's right. the whole idea of making so much more available to every other person. So, yes, if, if you are, in theory, if you had the money to purchase one of these printers, at that scale, you can imagine that's an, ex an expensive piece of equipment. But rather than transporting that, if you can purchase the design, say that, is, that design now is done in China and produced in China, if I can download that on the internet and run that on my printer here or in any other country in the world, I'm cutting down on fuel costs, on shipping costs, those kinds of mm. things. It, it's just when you start to think about it, um, I have an illustration here, it's part of this package that Aaron gave us as well, where in our profession you had things like these traditional steel connectors in the structure. You might imagine something like this, it's a steel pipe with these little flanges with holes on. Okay. So things like um, uh, whole window walls, if you were looking in a building, things that we're familiar with, mm -hmm. um, uh, space frames all right, on buildings. Well, this company Arup, which is one of the most famous engineering companies in the world, then he has a picture of the same thing, 3D printed in steel. So this is structural. It can go as it is into the building, but it's, they brought art into it. Mm. Because of the printing, you can see how it's almost got this kind of art deco, liquidy form with detail and pattern and very sinewy pieces extruded in the printing. So this really is the next frontier. Mm. Are we all going to have a 3D printer in our homes? I think we, yeah, I think so. And I think we're, I think in education this plays a great role. Think of, of projects for kids in home, in your home. So even right now, one of these small printers are around a $1,000, all right? There was a time when the printers we bought for our desks were around a $1,000. VCRs were $1,000. Yeah, I remember that. They first came Now out. they're 199 yeah. or even 99 right? Yeah. And so kids' projects um, at school that could be, where they can learn to program and design and think in three dimensions and then produce these objects as part of their projects. Think of the power of that. Mm -hmm. this, the whole, this whole realm of design thinking that we've looked at ourselves right on our show, the power of design thinking in organizations, in design, and start to give kids this ability to think and imagine things in 3D, not just objects, but problems and finding solutions to things in three dimensions. So thinking through organizational things, thinking through product design, I think it's going to open up a whole world of creativity. Amazon just came out with a new phone that allows you to see things in uh, 3D. Yes. And there are some people who are being critical of it, saying it's just a way for Amazon to get you to buy more from Amazon. Uh, sure. Because now you, you just point this phone at something, and it comes up, and it... it, it, it I guess it kind of jumps at you. You can actually see what it looks like yeah. if you were there in the store buying mm -hmm. it. What a world we live in. I know. Man. Well, think, think of, you know, remember the holograms, right? How wonderful that oh, was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you held it in that whole in early investigation of, of that fascination with taking 2D stuff and showing it to us in 3D. Mm -hmm. It's here now. It really is. It's surrounding us. So there's this massive rush on, huge investment rush, billions of dollars now being invested companies are on this treadmill, if you will, this race to try to perfect these machines. Um, things like, uh, they're talking about 4D printing in some things, where, the, where that's going to go. Well, literally, the addition to water of a 3D printed object enables it to grow to a different size. Mm -hmm. So right now, right, we have the sponges you can get at the kitchen store, right? They're nice and flat, easy package, put water in it, it grows. Well, imagine being able to transport and move product that when you add water or add a liquid grows to a certain size. <laughs> so when you start to think and you start to futurize some of these ideas, it's just incredible. So as a designer, as a creator, it does not take away from your creativity? No, it enables. I see this as completely enabling better and, and we've seen it in architecture, the the forms that are coming out in architecture, the the, the people moving away from traditional roof wall floors 
and where the whole building becomes pieces of sculpture. So people like Frank Gehry, you know, is very well known for his bent metal facades and bright shiny things. The, the jelly bean in Chicago, right, in Millennium Park. That, oh, we're headed to the point where that can be printed and not just made on a steel frame and covered. So the things that we can imagine are now at the point where they are going to be accessible to everyone. Damien Farrell from Damien Farrell Design Group, local architecture firm here in Ann Arbor, on the air each week with Damien on Design. Fascinating look at 3D printing and yeah. where we're headed. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. You're welcome. And we're coming up on the Lucy Ann Land Show, 1290 WLBY. That was excellent. It's incredible you, you, what's it happening. It was really good. You did it's incredible. Job. Thank you for all your hard work on all this. Yeah. Yeah. I just know, look, look, these things are just beautiful. Yeah, they are. Yeah. When you think so, they're made like this, right? Yeah. They're not being bent and shaped. Yeah. They just... Choo, 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 choo. Wow. Amazing. I don't know what kind of world we live in. I don't think. I think, I think it's so exciting. It is. Things are going to be safer, stronger, better tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, you know. I mean, it's like, it's like taking a sewing machine in some ways. That technology. Knitting machines. Oh, Knitting yeah. Machines. How they do, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good analogy. You know? And, and extrapolating that into these extraordinary forms and shapes and so all of this this would be two colors right injected from two different sources and the machine just knows when to stop and start the color so even though it looks like it's all these pieces actually put together it's not oh wow